Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Al-lazina amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi zikrillah Ala bi zikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub Those who believe and their hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah Indeed, verily, hearts do find comfort and peace of mind in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha hazabahu shay faza'a ila salah if anything would worry Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi he would rush to pray. If it is not for the prayer, then nafl prayer, and so on. When one prostrates himself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he discharges himself and his mind from all the pain, from all the, 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 the worries and afflictions, and he is in a state of peace of mind. He is in a state of full comfort. This is what the prayer normally provides a person with. Similarly, a zikr. When some people complain to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi he advised them about similar conditions. He advised them with azkar and dua, particular azkar to be recited in the morning, right after fajr, and in the evening after asr until sunset. Such as the very famous dua of Abu Imama. When the Prophet ﷺ ordered him to say every morning and every evening, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hamm wa hazan wa a'udhu bika min al-ajiz wa al-kasal, wa a'udhu bika min al-jubn wa al-bukhl, wa a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dain wa qahr al-rijal. And also the beautiful dua of Allahumma inni abduka wa bnu abduka wa bnu amatika, nasiyati biyadik, maadin fi hukmuk, adil fi qadaaq. أسألك اللهم بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلبي ونور صدري وجلاء همي وحزني Whatever problem you're suffering from If you constantly say these two duas Allah will give you relief from these problems Inshallah Azza Jal If not, then there is no shame nor problem whatsoever to visit a psychiatrist I understand that according to our cultural traditions, whether the Arabic culture or the indo that the word psychiatrist right away, one would think that I'm not insane, I'm not out of my mind, but sometimes a healthy and a physically fit person and a sane person, they go through certain conditions or trials, they need to visit a physician, a psychiatrist in order to get some medication. Uh, lest they may get sucked in in a state of depression. You don't want to have this. If what you are having is something that goes, it comes and goes by, because simply you keep blaming yourself that you're not doing enough. If you, if this is the case, and that's why I ask you whether you feel that you're not doing enough and dissatisfied, or you feel depressed and unhappy, because there is a big difference. Feel feeling that you're not doing enough. This is very healthy. And this is an indication that you are a good person and a strong believer. And that was the complaint of many of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You remember we discussed before Hanzala when he met with Abu Bakr. Uh, may Allah be pleased with both of them. And Hanzala said, Ya Abu Bakr, nafaqa Hanzala. I feel myself a hypocrite. He said, why? So his condition was even much worse than yours. He said that you're doing this and this and that and you're not satisfied. He said that, I feel that I'm being munafiq. He said, how? He said, whenever we're sitting with the Prophet sallallahu he's teaching us about al-jannah and an-nar, it feels like we could visualize them. We're really willing to do anything that Allah or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa will command us with. Yet, when, once we leave and I go home or I get involved in my business, we tend to forget and we get busy with our daily activities. Guess what? Their daily activities were halal too. But he thought life is all about ibadah. So Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu arda said to Hanzala, well if this is the case, then me too. I have the same problem. They went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereupon he explained to them. He said that if you guys maintain the same condition as you sitting with me, the same level of iman, then you will be simply as good, as pure, as angels. And angels would come down from heaven to shake hands with you while you're walking in the streets and reclining in your beds. But we're human beings. One time, a part of our time, we offer the ibadat, which have been prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some other time, we take care of our worldly, lawful business. 
our holy law for business. Playing with your kids, having fun, going for a picnic, uh, doing some barbecue, racing with your husband. Some people think that religion is all about prayers and fasting and that's it. And that's why unfortunately we send the wrong message and the wrong signals to Muslims who are not practicing Islam. And to non-Muslims, they think that if you ever become Muslim or religiously committed, it will feel like you are in prison. No. I swear to Allah, Wallahi, Wallahi, by Allah in whose hand is my soul. The maximum freedom and joy and delight is in being religiously committed. But you need to learn how. You need to learn how to enjoy your life by praying on time, by taking your kids out for a picnic, by uh, throwing a party, halal party, or a sleepover, having fun, competitions. Uh, I really enjoy it every time I read or I hear that the Prophet ﷺ raised uh, against his wife, Aisha, not once, several times. And in the first time, she was young, she was light and slim, so she beat him. Then a few years later, the Prophet ﷺ, and guess what? They were returning from a campaign from the battlefield. Do we have time to think about that? Yes, have lawful fun. حَتَّى يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِي دِينِنَا فُسْحَ I made sure when we were living in, in the States, that the community, every week that we must have fun. And we go um, uh, outdoor camping, or fishing, or hunting, or whatever. Halal, and enjoy all of that. We go fishing while we're listening to the Qur'an, we're listening to the adhkar, learning something new. Take our kids, enjoy the deen and the halal dunya. So if you can change your lifestyle a little bit, and expect from Allah what's best, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the sacred hadith, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبِدِي بِي I'm exactly as my servant thinks of me and expects from me. You think that he's merciful, you will get that mercy, inshaAllah Azza Jal. You think that he's generous and you expect from him uh, mercy and forgiveness and generosity, this is what you will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If all of that is not working still, making the adhkar is not helping, and reading the Qur'an with pondering its meaning is not helping, then take my advice and visit a Muslim psychiatrist. It is highly recommended and I don't have a problem with that in Islam actually encourages people to seek remedy. Wallahu a'lam. And do not forget, the best mean of seeking remedy is from Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ And if I ever get ill, he is the one who gives me the remedy and the cure. He is the one who cures me. So you can always ask him via dua. Allahumma shfini wa afini. Ask him to give you the peace of mind and the comfort for your eyes. رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجْعَنَّا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And so on. And I would not forget, of course, to pray for you. May Allah give you comfort, peace of mind and happiness in your life and in the hereafter, inshaAllah.